Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. And we are looking, uh, and I'm continuing my review and refutation of the book by Mr. Lance Conley entitled Hope Resurrected. Mr. Conley says he was once a full preterist, but he rejected it. And he now claims that the doctrine of the election, now he is a, an Eastern Orthodox believer, and they have a very distinctive view of election, which is different from the Reformed view. And uh, it's often amusing to watch his interactions with and against the Reformed view. You know, it's, it, it, it's like, okay, uh, I'm Lance Conley, I've got the truth, everyone else is a heretic. Uh, Reformed folks uh, consider Mr. Conley's view of election to be false doctrine and heresy. We're right, you're wrong. Uh, so it's rather interesting to follow those developments. Nonetheless, M Mr. Conley says that his view of election is just the fatal blow to the full preterist view. Here's what you need to know about Mr. Conley's view of election. He says election ends at the day of the Lord. After the day of the Lord, there is no more sin, there is no more evangelism. Since there is no more evangelism or sin, there is no more election. And thus he says, and by the way, in some of his quote responses, unquote, uh, which are really horrible, but nonetheless, in some of his responses, he said, why is Preston simply dealing with my introductory chapter on election and not my chapter in which I refute Max King? Well, the bottom line is, if he lays down the foundation for his doctrine of election that he will develop in his discussion of Max King, if I, if I refute and falsify the foundation upon which his refutation of King is built, guess what? I don't have to go verse by verse, word by word, through his doctrine or through his discussion of Max King or his discussion of me. All I have to do is to show that his basic assumptions, his foundation concerning his doctrine of election is false. Thus, to reiterate, to prove Mr. Conley's doctrine, the basic fundamental doctrine of election, to prove it wrong is to prove his entire book wrong. So, what I shared with you over the last couple of videos is the fact that the Bible teaches us in the Old Testament and the New that the kingdom of Christ as established by Christ on earth among men as a teaching evangelizing entity would never end. Listen to me very carefully. All right, this is really simple, but it's really, really profound. If it is the case that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ, the Messiah, has no end, then it cannot be true that Mr. Conley's view of election, i.e., election ends at the day of the Lord, is false. It is true that the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Christ, the messianic kingdom established on earth among men will never end. Therefore, Mr. Conley's claims about election are false. Once again, meaning his entire book is false. Now, I shared with you in our last video last week, Matthew 24, verse 35, where Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass away. My words, that's the gospel of Jesus Christ, established on earth among men to call men to salvation. My word will never pass away. Now, what does pass away mean? Well, it can mean go out of existence. Well, if it goes out of existence, then it violates Jesus' word, right? Number two. It can mean, as Hebrews chapter 12, 25 and following shows, it can also mean to cease to function as established. Well, if the gospel of Christ established among men 
for the salvation of men cease to function, ceases to function in calling men to salvation, then Christ's word passes away. But Jesus said, my word will never pass away. Thus, once again, if the gospel of Christ, number one, will never cease to exist, then Mr. Connolly is wrong. If the gospel of Christ will never cease to function in calling men to salvation, offering forgiveness through the blood of Christ, if the gospel of Christ will never cease to function, then Mr. Connolly is wrong. His doctrine of election, his entire book is wrong. You know what's fascinating to me? In a private email correspondence with, uh, with Thomas Ice a few years ago, I asked Thomas Ice, is it the case that the gospel of Christ will ever cease to function as it functions now? He wrote back and emphatically stated, pointing out the Greek of Matthew chapter 24, verse 35, by the way, in which Jesus uses a double negative, will by no means pass away, demands that the gospel of Christ will never cease to function. Well, let me say this one more time. If the gospel of Christ never ceases to function, then Mr. Conley's entire book is wrong. Because if the gospel of Christ never ceases to function, there is no end of time. If the gospel of Christ never ceases to function, then the Messianic age, the New Covenant age, never ceases to function. And Mr. Connolly's wrong. Well, let's look at another passage or two very quickly. Now, there are a couple of things that I'm going to get to uh, in in our discussion here. And look, this discussion alone could really extend for an awful long time, and I don't intend for it to do so. I'm only going to examine another couple of passages which affirm the unending nature of the kingdom of Christ established on earth among men. Okay? The unending nature. Point number two. I'm going to demonstrate, I'm going to answer an objection to that. And I'm going to show that there are several passages, both in the Old Testament and in the New, that prove that after the day of the Lord, evangelism on earth among men would continue. Do you catch the power of that? If I can prove, and believe me, I can, if I can prove that after the day of the Lord, Evangelism, calling men out of sin, calling men to know the God of the Bible. That continues after the day of the Lord. Thus, if evangelism and sin and calling men out of sin, if that continues after the day of the Lord, well, one more time, Mr. Conley's book, every bit of it, is false. Well, let's look at a couple of passages very, very quickly. I've already gone on here now for 12 minutes, uh, according to my clock. Uh, well, actually, not quite that long. Okay, in Luke chapter 1, the angel appears to Mary and makes a promise to her. Now, mind you, this promise and this discussion is not talking about any proposed scenario after the day of the Lord, per se. All right? That's not the focus. The focus is the establishment of the kingdom and the resulting reality from that. That means it would entail and include after the day of the Lord. But my point is that the focus of the promise is the establishment of the kingdom of Christ, His rule and His reign, and does not discuss, but, it, but excludes 
any possibility of that rule and of that rain ending. Now look, if the rain ends, it violates this text. What does the text say? The angel said to Mary, he, that is the God Most High, or excuse me, that is Christ, the, the Messiah. Let me start with verse 32, okay? Back up. He, that's Jesus Messiah, will be great, will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. Now, when Jesus ascended up on high, he sat down on the throne of David, Acts chapter 2, 29 and following. When he was in heaven, on the throne of David, he was ruling over heaven and earth, Matthew 28, 18 to 20. All right? That's very critical to understand. When he ascended up on high and sat down at the right hand of the throne, he was given, quote, the sure mercies of David, Acts 13, 31 and following. That's the throne of David. And it is upon that throne when he began to rule on that throne. Now, there was an interim time, as we shall see, in which sitting on that throne, he was in the process of putting down his enemies. When he put down his enemies, he would rule and reign forever without end. And that's included in Luke chapter 1. All right. He will give him the throne of, the, of his father David. Now, watch this. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom, there will be no end. Well, you see, this is directly parallel to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 35. If the gospel of Christ ceases to function as it was established and given, i.e. to call men to salvation, then it passes away. If the kingdom of Christ, which was established among men to call men to salvation, if it ceases to function, then it comes to an end. But you see, the Greek here does not allow for there to be an end. Now, somebody may say, well, you know, the word forever, that can be limited. Well, that's true, but this is in a, this is in a parallel form, all right? He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Well, okay, we could say since... Uh, since the word forever is sometimes limited in duration, yes it is, that perhaps this could include one day when the kingdom would cease to function. Unfortunately, the parallelism form of the text forbids that because it continues of his kingdom, which is his rule on the throne of David, there will be no end. Me tell us, tell on. No end. No end here is defining forever. And thus forever in this text means no end. Well, once again, the kingdom that the angel is talking about was to be established when Christ ascended up on high. Actually, it began in, in his personal ministry, but we won't go into that. Point of it is, when he ascended up on high, he sat on the throne of David. He, he began to rule and to reign on the throne of David. And that means he was ruling and reigning over his church on earth among men, calling men to salvation. And thus Paul would, would later write in Ephesians 3, 20 and 21, unto him, that is the Father, be glory in the church. Well, that church is the messianic kingdom of David, over which Christ, sitting at the right hand, began to rule and to reign at his ascension, concerning which the angel said, it will have no end. And thus, Paul would say unto him, unto, him, unto God, be glory in the church by Jesus Christ or through Jesus Christ throughout all ages. Now, the good old King James Version says, Age without end. Well, the Greek of the text um, is, is aeonion ton aeonion, or oi. It, it is a heaping up. It is to the ages of the ages. G.K. Beale, F.F. F. Bruce, 
host of other world-famous Greek scholars, inform us that the form of expression found here is the strongest Greek expression, other than simply overtly saying no end, like in Luke chapter 1. It's one of the strongest street, uh, Greek expression for endlessness to be found in the entire Greek language. Now, once again, it doesn't say, well, you know, one of these days the kingdom of Christ on earth will end, but glory to God will be given in heaven after the end of time. There is no such doctrine to be found. So I'm out of time at the present moment. So in my next video, I'm going to share with you the key objection. The key objection that says, well, you know, uh, Christ's rule will be temporary. He will actually rule forever and forever. The rule that began on earth will continue in heaven after the end of time. It'll just have a different form. It'll have a different function. His mediatorial rule over the kingdom as the great high priest will come to an end. But his rule as king of kings and lord of lords, that will never end. Well, there's lots and lots and lots that is false about that. So in the next video, I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where Paul says, he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet, or then comes the end, when he shall deliver the kingdom to the Father, for he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. Well, see, we're told right there, there's the end of Christ's reign. We're told right there, he delivers the kingdom to the Father. We're told right there, he will only reign until... He has put his enemies under his feet. Well, to suggest that Paul was saying that Christ's kingdom or that his rule and his reign will one day come to an end is to totally misconstrue that text. And that's precisely what Mr. Conley does in his book. Okay, I'm totally out of time. Hey, thanks so much for joining me for this morning's morning musing. I appreciate you being with me. Listen, if you want a discussion of whether or not the kingdom of Christ ever comes to an end, you need to get a copy of my book, Like Father, Like Son, on Clouds of Glory. Also, in, a, in my March 2020, three book special. Normally, these three books, if you ordered them separately, would cost you 60 bucks. All right? Like Father, Like Son, the nature and the duration of the kingdom of Christ. The elements shall melt with fervent heat, proving that the, that the New Testament nor the Bible predicts the end of time. And how is this possible? All right? Again, if you purchase them separately, they would cost you $60. If you order them through my website, donkpreston.com, bibleprophecy.com, there's a banner right up at the top, March 2020 three book special. Now the offer does not extend to out of U.S. orders, but if you want a PDF copy at greatly reduced price, then contact me. There'll be a tab up there showing you how to do that. All right. So take advantage of this fantastic March 2020 three book special. Save yourself at least 20 bucks. Okay. Thanks again for joining me for this morning's morning musings. You have a fantastic weekend. We'll see you on Monday.